Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Uh, I wanted to come on here and just take a quick moment to discuss CAP Theorem, specifically in the context of system design interviews. And so there's a lot of content on CAP Theorem online, I'm sure you've read some of it, uh, but most of which I find makes it way more daunting than it needs to be, and none of which explains particularly well why it matters specifically in the context of a system design interview. And so working with candidates every single day, as I do as the co-founder of Hello Interview, it's shown me just how much confusion there is around this maybe seemingly simple topic. Uh, and so I wanted to hop on here and see if we could solve that confusion for you all uh, kind of once and for all. So if we turn our attention to the whiteboard, we can start with the very basic definition. What is CAP theorem? Well, CAP theorem states that you can only have two out of three of the following, consistency, availability, and partition tolerance. So in a distributed system, as is almost always the case in our system design interviews, you'll have to choose two out of these three. And so consistency, we'll get into more details on each of these later on, but consistency at a high level just means that all users see the same data at the same time. Availability means that every request gets a response, whether it's successful or not. And then partition tolerance is defined as the system works despite network failures between nodes. Now, why does this even matter in the first place? Why do we care about CAP theorem in a system design interview? That's because in a system design interview, the first thing that you're gonna do is you're gonna align on the requirements with your interviewer. And this is usually the functional requirements, the features of the system, and then the non-functional requirements, which are the qualities of the system. Now, when you're going over the non-functional requirements, the first thing you should do is start with CAP theorem. You should ask yourself, does this system need to prioritize consistency or availability? And the reason that's the question is because if we come back up here to CAP theorem, Partition tolerance in a distributed system is a must. So we've chosen one out of our three. And now the question that you in a system design interview need to wrestle with is simply, do I prioritize consistency in my system or do, prior, do I prioritize availability? And this ends up being really important because it's gonna have a significant influence on your design later on in the deep dives. But why are these two things at odds with one another in the first place? Why do we have to choose between consistency and availability? Why not both? Well, let's look at an example which will hopefully answer that question. Imagine that you host a website. This website has two servers, one located in the USA and one located in Europe. Now user A goes to write data to the server that they're connected to, located in the United States. Let's say this data that they're writing is an update to their public profile. Maybe they're just updating their name. Once they do so, that data is replicated to the server in Europe so that when user B goes to read the public profile of user A, they see that latest data, the updated name, easy. Now, what happens if this network connection between these two servers gets severed for some reason, it goes down? And more importantly, what happens if it goes down uh, before we had a chance to replicate that data, that updated data from, user, uh, from server A to the server in Europe? Well, at this point, we as a system have a decision to make. When user B goes to read this data, should we A, give them an error because this data is now stale and so we don't want them to read stale data? Or B, do we just let them view the stale data? So writing that down, in the case of a network failure, should we A, stop serving the data? If we choose that option, then our system has prioritized strong consistency. If we chose that we can just risk giving them wrong data, seeing the old name for a little bit until this is back online and figures itself out. Uh, if that's okay, then our system chose availability. So what are some examples where we would choose option A? We would stop serving data because we prioritized consistency in the context of CAP theorem. Well, the first option would be if it was like a ticket booking platform, either airlines or events, hotels. And so imagine that what user A was doing when they wrote was that they were choosing seat 6A in an airplane and then our network failure broke. Well, user B is looking to book a seat on the same flight, and if we showed them that seat 6A was still available when it's not, this would be catastrophic. It would mean that they could book seat 6A, and both user A and user B would show up to the airport on the same day thinking that they're gonna sit in the same seat. Obviously a problem. So in that case, we would choose consistency over availability. What about like an inventory system, like Amazon? Imagine that you're down to your last item, User A is buying the last toothbrush on Amazon. 
if we have our network failure and user B goes and looks, they would see that there was one available and they would buy it too. Now we only have one item, but we have two users that think that they bought it. That's catastrophic. Lastly, another common example is financial systems. Imagine that user A goes to buy a stock and they hit the USA server. User B goes to either buy or sell that same stock. Well, the value of that stock, particularly if it's a low float, might have changed depending on the size of this sale in particular. And so the order book needs to be kind of up to date. And in this case, it wouldn't be. So we need to choose strong consistency. We should show user B an error as opposed to showing them out of date information. Now, if you don't need strong consistency, then you would choose availability. And this would be everything else. Of course, this list isn't exhaustive, but in the case where you don't need strong consistency, in the case where you can risk stale data, this is the overwhelming majority of cases. Like our first example with profile data, so what if user B reads the wrong name for a little period of time? Who cares? So anything like in a social media app, a user A posts some data, user B doesn't see their post for a while, or doesn't see an update to their post. No big deal. What about a service like Yelp, where there's businesses that get reviewed? And so maybe user A is a business and they're updating their business information and user B is a customer and they're gonna see slightly out of date business information for a couple seconds or maybe up to a minute or so. It's totally fine. We would rather show them the business because we want that business than uh, you know, care that one menu item is slightly out of date for a couple seconds. Same too with Netflix. What if we change the description on a new movie or we update a new movie or we add a movie is it okay that the person in Europe doesn't see it for a couple seconds or they see something that's stale or out of date for a couple seconds? Of course it is. And so what it comes down to in your interview is that when you're going over your non-functional requirements, you are asking yourself a simple question. Does this system need strong consistency? Does it matter that every single user sees the same state of my system at any given time? And if they didn't, would it be catastrophic? If the answer to that question is yes, you're gonna prioritize consistency over availability. If the answer to that question is no, then you're gonna prioritize availability over consistency. Great, you made your decision in your non-functional requirements. You decided either to prioritize consistency or availability. But how does this influence your design? Now you have to go design the system. Well, if you chose strong consistency, you're gonna keep a couple things in mind. You might need to implement distributed transactions. So if you had, for example, a cache and a database, you need to remain, ensure that those two things remain strongly consistent. And so you'll have to guarantee that when a write happens to one, the write happens to the other, implementing a distributed transaction to ensure this. You also might limit things to a single node. Like maybe your database is a single instance. If it's a single instance, then there can't be these propagation issues, right? And so you'll do the math and you might say, for my airline ticket booking system, I have a single database here. And that single database is going to be something like a Postgres database or a SQL database for which I can issue atomic transactions. In this way, everybody views the same data because they're all reading from the same instance. We also might need to just accept higher latency, right? So we're gonna have to show users spinners or something while we're waiting for propagation to happen um, between instances. And so some example tools or traditional relational database management systems, your Postgres's, your SQLs, Spanner offered by Google is a great option. Note that this doesn't mean if you have consistency, you can't go with NoSQL. Many NoSQL databases offer strong consistency modes. DynamoDB offers one of them. Um, it's controversial to some whether or not this would be the right choice. In my opinion, it's totally fine. Now, what about if you ended up going with availability? Well, if you go with availability, then you can use multiple replicas. You're going to scale out your system and can have different read replicas. And it's okay if there's Propagation between those read replicas, eventual consistency is okay. Things like CDC, change data capture, which is by definition eventually consistent, is okay to use in your system. Uh, you're gonna use things like DynamoDB, not with that strong consistency mode, but with like multiple availability zones could be the configuration there. Technologies like Cassandra, uh, which are well optimized for high availability. These are all good decisions if you decided to prioritize availability in your system. Last thing before we wrap up here, I have some nuance to throw at you. If you are a junior or mid-level candidate, you might wanna just stop the video now. I don't want things to get confusing. If you're senior or up, then this is important to know. And the important thing to understand here is that while we choose availability or consistency and those things are at odds, we can have different parts of our system that prioritize different requirements. So to make that clear, imagine Ticketmaster is a really good example. In Ticketmaster, as we discussed, we wanna prioritize consistency for booking tickets. 
because we can't have double booking. We can't have two users thinking they have the same seat. But there are other parts of our system for which we should prioritize availability. Like for example, the CRUD on events. So creating, updating, deleting events. If a user goes and updates the event description, it's okay if that's eventually consistent. Uh, it's better that people can always view the event. And so in a system design interview, you could be nuanced here with your interviewer. And you could say, as it pertains to CAP theorem, I'm gonna prioritize availability for searching and viewing events, but I'm gonna prioritize consistency for booking tickets to events. Let's look at another example. Consider Tinder. Tinder's a similar case where we need consistency for matching because if user A swiped on me in Europe and then I swipe on them in the United States, I want to immediately show the user a match. You matched right when you swipe if you're the second person swiping. And so I need a consistent view of who swiped of me. Cool, so consistency for matching. But when it comes to viewing profile data, again, if a user went and updated their profile to a different picture or something like this, it's okay if I see the old picture for a while, a couple seconds, minutes, so be it. And so in Tinder, I would say to my interviewer, I'm gonna prioritize availability for viewing profile data and updating profile data, but I'm gonna prioritize consistency for match data. Now, there's one other thing in the so-called advanced section that's relevant. You'll hear consistency always used and people will just say consistency in the context of CAP theorem. What they really mean is strong consistency. They mean all reads reflect that most recent write. This is what we've been talking about. So if you hear consistency in this context, just think strong consistency. But the reality is there's different levels to consistency. And if you wanna be fancy, you can get into the nuance of these different levels in your system. And so there's also what's called causal consistency. And this just ensures that related events appear in the same order. And so for example, you can't have a comment on a post, uh, maybe replying to a previous comment, right? That comes before that comment it's replying to. That wouldn't make sense. So it's okay if these things take a while to come in and not everyone sees all the same comments, but nobody should see a comment replying to a previous comment in the inverted order. Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, a third one here is read your own rights consistency. And so this is that I as a user should have a consistent view of what I've just done, but other users could see something different. And so back to our USA Europe example, user A who updated their profile should immediately see their own profile update or else they'll think the system was broken. So they need read your rights consistency but the system doesn't need strong consistency because user B in Europe can still see the old thing, that's fine. And then of course, as I've been alluding to throughout this, this whole interview, the lowest level of consistency is that eventual consistency. So when we choose availability over consistency, we're not saying our system's not gonna be consistent. We're just saying that we're okay with eventual consistency. We're okay that it's gonna take a while for the system to level out into a consistent state. So. If you wanna go into each of these in your interview, it can show some nuance, it can show some senior, some staff level thinking when you be specific here. All right, folks, thanks for watching. Hopefully this was useful. Let me know in the comments what you think of this new format. It ended up being longer than I thought it would be. I thought this would be five minutes, but uh, you know, let me know. I wanna hop in here and maybe make some of these periodically when I, when I learn that something is a little bit more confusing to folks. Um, as always, we got a bunch of great breakdowns on the website, hellointerview.com, a bunch more deep dives on content just like this. Check it out. And then actually at the end of this month, November, 2024, I don't know when you're watching this, uh, we're gonna be launching a bunch more content, kind of in a premium offering. So people are always asking for more content. The free content will always continue. The YouTube will continue, um, but we will have even more content for those who wanna pay for premium. So keep an eye on an eye out for that. It'll be coming at the end of the month. Awesome. All right, folks, good luck with your interviews.